Three stocks that are absolutely red hot. That's what we're talking about here today, folks. And we're going to talk about are these stocks buys? Are they not buys? What's the risk that, that comes with these stocks? Um, these stocks are absolutely incredible right now. Okay, first one we're going to get into is Fubo and what's going on here with Fubo. This is a crazy crazy situation. The stock's up like 28%, 29% just in the past five days. And so I want to go through all three of these stocks, talk about them, talk about kind of the risks that comes with them and um, those sorts of things as well. Okay. So a lot to go through in today's video. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much for being subscribed folks. I appreciate each and every one of you that always show up to the video. So Fubo first off, okay. Stock's making a massive move five day up nearly 29% in regards to this one. Okay. So you might have heard the news out there, okay, this came out on September 1st, that basically Spectrum cable subscribers, uh, which is owned by this company named Charter, Charter Communications, right? Between Charter and Disney, the relationship's broken up, and they're trying to negotiate some new terms and whatever, um, and it's been going really bad. And so this Charter company is usually like the second biggest cable company in the United States of America. Now, if you have that cable service, you have no ESPN right now, you have no Disney channels or anything like that. And if you're a sports fan, like ESPN's a must because they own so many different networks. It's ridiculous in the sports world, like especially if you're like a college football fan and college football season just kicked off, okay? So this is obviously horrible, horrible news for the customers of that company, right? And um, honestly, it's bad news for Disney as well. And it's bad news for Charter Communications. Everybody loses in this situation except really like two specific companies. One is YouTube TV and the other is Fubo. It was the two, only two companies that are really benefiting from this situation. But this is kind of where I thought things kind of stopped here was just like, oh, cool. Like, you know, this is just going to mean a bunch more extra people are going to sign up for Fubo this fall that weren't going to previously do it. But this is going to get supercharged. Okay. Because I, you know, I found something that's absolutely insane in regards to this situation that I'm about to show with you. Now, if you notice this, right, Massive bump up right when college football games were getting ready to start. This is Google Trends data for Fubo. As soon as uh, basically uh, college football games were getting ready to start, boom, Google Trends data goes absolutely insane for Fubo, which is something you consistently see. Whenever there's a big sporting event about to happen, Fubo sees a massive epic spike up. And the great news with Fubo is they do a great job of keeping all those customers or a huge portion of those customers that sign up for the service, right? Now, things get way crazier from here. Okay. This is way more shocking when you go down the rabbit hole. So Spectrum Cable TV teams up with Fubo to offer a discounted rate on Fubo. What? Yes. Spectrum Cable sent their customers an email that they can basically receive Fubo and get a 30% discount on Fubo. This is crazy folks absolutely crazy i never saw this one coming what like why in the world even if let's say fubo's giving them some sort of kickback why in the world would spectrum go out of their way to email all their customers and tell them hey guys here's 30 percent off go sign up for fubo that's insane unless spectrum was planning on making some sort of uh you know purchase of fubo shares or stock or something like that that's insane it's just like giving your, your customers away. This is this is absolutely insane. And so I was going on, on Twitter, which is now called X, and uh, I was just looking and, and trying to see what people were talking about here. This is crazy, right? This person posts, thank, thank you, uh, Spectrum, for dropping Disney and forcing me to try Fubo TV. I actually love it and would have never tried it. Uh, had you kept Disney, can't wait to <laughs> cancel Spectrum. Like usually people don't really like cable companies very much, right? Uh, you know, usually for cable companies, you get locked into these massive contracts and, you know, versus like the new age, right? Netflix, Fubo, all this type of stuff. You can sign up if you want to cancel for any reason. You can cancel. It's easy. It's, it's not complicated. Whereas, you know, the cable companies, the salary companies, it's it, they've always been, you know, companies that people hate you know, for the most part, I saw this on Twitter X as well. This was uh, somebody posted this, and this is kind of like the email they had received right from their phone. Spectrum discount applied, special offer uh, for a limited time, and basically you get thirty percent off for two months signing up for Fubo through this deal. This is this is wild, man, absolutely wild. Now the reason this is so crazy is if you know much about business, okay, and especially if you know much about cable companies, satellite companies, it's all about LTV your lifetime value of a customer, right? And that's basically a way of looking at business from 
how much is a customer going to spend with me over time? And the better business model you have is, is the better your LTV is over time, right? If you think about the best business models really in the world, you think about companies like Apple, you think about companies like Microsoft, their LTV is outstanding. If somebody is on the Microsoft suite of products, they're using those products for many times decades, right? If you're on the Microsoft cloud, you could be using that for years or decades, right? If you were an Apple customer, Apple, one of the most powerful LTVs in the world, right? Your iPhone goes to break, you go buy another iPhone, right? Your iPad breaks, your MacBook breaks, your Mac breaks, whatever, okay? You go to buy another one. You're signed up for the iCloud. You're signed up for Apple Music, all these different things. This is what makes magical business models is LTV. Intuit, one of the best business models in the world. QuickBooks, TurboTax, all those products, right? People use those month in and month out, year in and year out. Incredible LTV, one of the best business models in the world, right? Meta, Google, incredible LTV. People come back and watch YouTube videos and get served ads, right? Or they pay for YouTube premium, right? Google, Google search. People use Google search all the time, all those ads. Obviously, Facebook, Instagram, all those ads. LTV incredible. Your LTV is everything. So the fact that Spectrum would go give their customers to Fubo over here is crazy because you're risking losing hundreds of thousands, if not millions of your customers over to Fubo. And like you lose those people, they're not coming back. Like that's the bottom line with that. Like people are going to sign up for one service and they're going to keep one service. So if you lose those people, that's everything, man. And now you just gave your LTV of thousands of dollars, if not tens of thousands of dollars per customer over to Fubo. Because remember, somebody signs up for Fubo, 70 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever, a month. Over the course of a year, that's a thousand plus dollars. And that's year after year after year for as far out as I can see. This is insane, man. This is, I've never seen something so questionable in my life. I've never seen something like this, right? No, September 2nd was Saturday, right? Saturday, big college football day. And so we don't even have the data in regards to this. We have September 1st in regards to the last 90 days. And in the past 90 days, already on Friday, we saw the biggest Google Trends interest in Fubo that we've seen in the past 90 days. Can you imagine what September 2nd is going to be? The actual day college football games are going on? Oh my gosh, the Google Trends data is going to be absolutely incredible. Now, I w took it back from 2004 all the way through present, right? And Fubo has obviously only been relevant for the last few years. And uh, Google Trends kind of does this like projection out. And basically, we'll see if this is, ends up being correct. But Google Trends data is kind of projecting out that September is going to be the biggest month by far and away ever for Google Trends data for Fubo overall, right? And once again, it's not just that Fubo's can attract all these new potential customers, right? They were already going to attract a ton of new customers with or without this whole Spectrum situation. The Spectrum situation is just a cherry on top in the situation. We know Fubo does such a great job of keeping their customers around after somebody signs up. So, I mean, the, the LTV they're attracting here right now has got to be ridiculous. Now, to add more fuel to this fire, we got an insanely huge college football game coming up on this coming Saturday. So this Charter Disney situation needs to be filled, like figured out quickly. And I mean really quickly. I'm not sure if it's going to be figured out quickly considering Spectrum is offering two months of Fubo. That's basically almost like Spectrum kind of saying this might be a longer process, right? So this is a huge game. Texas is playing Alabama at Alabama. And Texas is going to be ranked probably number eight or nine in the country. And if you're a college football fan which <laughs> there's a lot of people in the United States of America that are college football fans, you live for these matchups. This is a top 10 matchup. Two top 10 teams uses everything. You're not, you're a college football fan, you're not messing that game. So can you imagine the signups on this coming Saturday if, if, you know, regardless if the charter deal comes through. But if the charter deal is still not uh, figured out with Disney, oh my gosh, then there's a massive Monday night football game coming up. On Monday, the Bills, which is one of the most, you know, uh, exciting teams in the league and one of the best teams in the league are playing the Jets. And I can tell you the ratings are going to be ridiculous for this game because the Jets have Aaron Rodgers, who's like an NFL legend and now is going to play for the Jets. And this, comp this, this team was just featured on Hard Knocks, which is a very successful program on HBO that's been going for like 20 plus years, and they were just featured on there. So uh, you're talking about like 
that's a must-watch game, and it's on exclusively on ESPN, right? Monday Night Football. You're an NFL fan. You're not freaking missing that game. You will find a way to watch that game. So this is literally the most perfect scenario you could have ever imagined for Fubo. I, I like. I'm like still shocked by the whole situation. I, I mean. Regardless, Fubo was going to attract so many customers, so many new customers this college football season, NFL season as it was. But then you add the charter situation on top, and then you have them emailing their customers to go sign up for Fubo. Like, like what did we do to deserve this? Like, you got to be kidding me. This is the best thing ever, okay? Now, in regards to Fubo, right, the only bad thing you can really say about Fubo, profitability. The company's still not profitable. Probably not going to be profitable in 2024. There's a potential they could have a quarter of profitability in 2024, but profitability likely coming in 2025, okay? So that's the bad thing with Fubo, that if you're on this this train, right, you're going to have to deal with the fact that profitability is not there right now. And you're going to have to just, you know, deal with that, I guess you can say, right? The great news is the company has a massive cash load, and the great news is Fubo should have money pouring in over these coming quarters and so that should certainly help the situation and if fubo attracts way more customers than they had anticipated that could help the company get to profitability much faster than they had anticipated because the company had in my opinion actually relatively conservative numbers and i think they're going to probably blow those numbers away so the profitability story has been improving it should continue to improve but you know it is uh, the, the one negative. But there's really nothing else you can say negative about Fubo. They got all the channels you really need other than maybe TNT for basketball season. They got all the channels you need. They've got the marketing down. They've got the product, right? They've certainly obviously got the relationships to have this <laughs> Spectrum deal go through, which is just shocking to me. And so they, they keep their customers around and their LTV is ridiculous, right? So... When I look at Fubo, it's got everything except the profitability right now. If they get that, there's nothing There's nothing bad you can say about Fubo anymore at that point in time. There's, you got nothing, okay? So we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, man, it's it's quite an interesting situation nonetheless, okay? Next one, you thought Fubo was hot. Nah, we got hotter, okay? The planet. <laughs> I pulled up a five-day on trading view of the planet. We're talking about an 89% move, an 89% move in regards to planet. So there's something absolutely massive going on for the planet. They announced an acquisition, and I covered that recently. But the thing that's going on for the planet right now might even be bigger, and this is probably bigger for the industry as well, okay? HHS is basically calling to reschedule Jack Jackson, okay? And, you know, for Forbes, they're talking about this is a huge deal, here's why, okay? A top Department of Health and Human Services official just made one of the most consequential federal announcements ever concerning Jack Jackson prohibition. The, the agency formally recommended Jack Jackson be moved from Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act, a reclassification for these things, that have a high potential for abuse in uh, no recognized medical value to the much less restrictive Schedule 3. Okay. This is a huge step in the right direction if this all happens and goes through and we go from here, okay? Reschedule would not implicitly open up access to institutional banking and lending in Jack Jackson, something Congress has attempted but failed to do through the Safe Banking Act. The elimination of 280E may well lead to some new source of capital entering the space, particularly new lenders. First, Moving Jack Jackson to the less restrictive Schedule 3 is a clear signal to cautious investors that the federal government is easing its stance on the risk for them has lowered, right? Yes, 100%. While this likely won't lead to the addition of large institutions like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, smaller institutions with a bit more... Allergy season, man. Sneezing out here. Sneezing out here. While this likely won't lead to the addition of large institutions like Bank of America or Wells Fargo, smaller institutions with a bit more tolerance may well decide the risk is minimal enough to get involved, right? So, you know, this is this is like big on many different fronts here, okay? More importantly, simply eliminating 280E should stir up new lending in a market where access has been difficult to come by. Most Jack Jackson loans currently come with 20 to 40% cost of capital, 
Rates considered predatory and usurious in any industry. One of the lender's biggest challenges today is that 280E SAPs, most of the free cash of SAPs, most of the SAPs, most of the free cash flow out of Jack Jackson businesses that is needed to service a debt, right? So, I mean, it's pretty simple. If you're taking out a loan at 20%, 30%, 40% rates, how are you going to be profitable enough to not only pay off all that debt with that insane interest rates, but then actually have something at the end of the day that is so unrealistic, right? It's incredibly unrealistic. So that's what I was saying. It's, it's, it basically saps most of free cash flow. Eliminating 280E will provide massive cash flow relief, allowing companies to take in debt for new projects and expansion that is not currently available. And with more lenders willing to loan to the Jack Jackson industry, interest rates on those loans will likely fall as well, allowing more companies to take on much needed operating and expansion capital there. Okay. Now, rescheduling could potentially have additional benefits for publicly traded Jack Jackson companies and their shareholders who have seen those company stocks plunge to one-tenth the value from a couple years ago. Yeah, it's been awful. If you own anything Jack Jackson related, your stocks have either gone to zero or they've probably lost 80 to 90% of their value from where they were two years ago. It's been absolutely brutal to go through for every stock basically in this industry. Nearly all U.S. Jack Jackson companies trade on the Canadian Securities Exchange and trading volume there has slowed to a molasses-like crawl. CSE investors poured capital into these businesses in advance of the two stock plunges, making them wary of redeploying more resources into the same companies. Because you got to understand, you go back to like, this is like 2017, 2018, the Jack Jackson industry was incredibly hot. Then we had a less hot period, but still a hot period at the end of 2020 into the beginning of 2021. And then it's been a ghost town ever since. It's been absolutely brutal, right? And so, you know, for somebody like the planet, I think there's a few important things to remember, okay? One is this is steps in the right direction. These are the sorts of steps you need if we're going to ever have federal legalization, which I hope we eventually have federal legalization in this country, right? Uh, The way I look at this very simply, my personal stance on this, I don't look at Jack Jackson as any worse than drinking, okay? In my opinion, they're kind of like equivalents. And to be quite frank, I have three kids. If I found out my kids were doing something at a high school party, let's say, and I would hope it wouldn't be either. But if you had to, if I had to choose, if I'd rather have them drinking at a party or let's call it engaging with Jack Jackson, if I had to pick, I'd rather have them engaging in Jack Jackson than drinking, believe it or not. And so federal legalization, it's eventually coming. We all know it. It's inevitable. It's just a question of when, but a step like this is a step in the right direction. And that's massive. That's huge. Okay. For this entire industry, for these stocks, for a company like planet, right? Which is the planet setting up to become a giant in this industry. Now, the next thing that important to remember in regards to planet is even after this Epic move, right? I showed you, it's like a 90% move. Cool. In five days, that's massive. It's a blip on the radar. It's a blip on the radar for planet. Don't even talk to me until the stock's four or five dollars again okay this is all just look at this this is this is our 90 percent move we're there okay (laughs) so you know when you take into account where the stock's been you just i mean it's insane how no one wanted to own these these stocks for the longest time right and a lot of people got bit on these stocks in 2017 2018 and then they got bit again at the end of 2020 so a lot of people are just like you know and that's how stocks like planet went to 50 cents and it's crazy because this is a I mean, this this industry's there. Like, the amount of customer base is there. It's just about moving it from a legal to a legal market, right? And to get all this done, you need the government's help. And so the government's been moving at a snail's pace. They need to move a lot faster. Bottom line in regards to that. It's like, do you want this market to expand and have a great chance of success? We'll move this industry from illegal to a legal industry, okay? Hey, and guess what, government? You'll actually be able to collect some tax money on that. Instead of throwing people in jail, you'll actually be able to make some money off them because then instead of a legal illegal product, it's a legal product and you can actually tax it. Oh, isn't that so smart? Oh my gosh, wow, we actually used our brains for once. Holy smokes, man, uh, government. But anyways, the bottom line is steps in the right direction. That's why the plant stock's absolutely moving in an epic way. 
third stock up here that's booming and is red hot right now is, is Zoom stock. Stocks climbed 12% just in the past five trading days. You know, and, and here's the thing that's going on with Zoom, okay? Everybody's really excited. Zoom's making another big move today specifically because basically they're bringing to this feature that's going to allow AI in your meetings, okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to be able to take notes for you. It's going to be able to recap conversations. If you have to miss a meeting at your workplace or something like that, it can obviously record the call. It can summarize the call, everything like that. And it's going to be added to, uh, you know, all customers are going to get access to this, I guess, without an, uh, an added fee. Now, you might say, well, without an added fee, why, why are people excited about this? Like, you know, if it's not going to make any extra money. The bottom line is you just want to make Zoom a stickier product overall, right? Especially if you're competing against Teams, Microsoft Teams. So it's it looks good. It, Zoom's kind of getting on in on the AI excitement here. And <clears throat> I think it's a helpful thing. I mean, if I worked for a company, I think this would be very, very helpful. To recap conversations, I wonder if it's something similar to Loom. Loom has a very interesting AI, which <clears throat> Loom I use pretty much on a daily basis. And Loom will be able to basically recap everything you talked about in a video, put time stamp it in everything, and it does that within two to three seconds. It'll be able to title your video on what's the most relevant thing to what you're talking about in that conversation. It's incredible. Incredible. It's able to do a, a full summary of what you talked about insanity absolutely insanity and so i'm assuming zoom has something similar to loom maybe it's even a step above that and it should be a very beneficial thing if you're somebody that uses zoom for your company overall right now the other thing i'll say about zoom stock right and i know this has always been a a big kathy wood stock and i know obviously the stock price has gotten absolutely smashed since pretty much end of 2020 beginning of 2021 i'll say I wouldn't be surprised if Zoom's a moneymaker over the next few years. Is it a stock I own? No. Is it a stock I really care to own? Probably not. But at the end of the day, if the stock trades cheap, I mean, it's at less than a 20 forward PE. And for a company like this, um, that's certainly not the, the highest number in the world. Okay, that's, def that's definitely a very doable number um, to kind of wrap your head around and, and own a company like this with the balance sheet it has and with kind of the stickier business model that they have overall. Okay. I appreciate everybody taking the time to enjoy today's video. I appreciate every single person for always watching these. And uh, thanks for being subscribed, folks. If you're looking to apply to join my private group, then check out the pinned comment down there. You can fill out an application. We see if you're a good fit to join us in there. Much love as always and have a great day.